we will take a look at how to configure FTP on a server in Packet Tracer. So just like all the other services, you would go to server first and then click on the services tab. That's where you have a list of all the services. You would select FTP, which is for file transfer protocol like we discussed in class. Um, now, the first thing you should notice here is if the service is on or off. So if it was off, you were you are supposed to uh, turn it on so that it works. Now, the second section that you might notice here is the user setup. The user setup um, basically is uh, just like how for the email, um, when you set up the email, uh, server, you need to have email accounts to be able to test the, the email or to access and write and send and all of that. Uh, you can do all of that only when you have email accounts, right? Similarly, for FTP, you need to have accounts to be able to access uh, files for transfer, okay? So this is where you would set up your account. If you notice, we already have an account by default, which is called Cisco, and it has all these permissions. Now, R stands for read. Uh, w stands for write, D stands for delete, N stands for rename, and L stands for list, okay? You can either use this account or you can create another one um, with different permissions uh, to be able to access it differently or to have restrictions, okay? Then the next section here is basically the files. These are all the files that are currently on this uh, server, okay? So, I'll show you how to create a user first, and then we'll see how uh, FTP really works, okay? So let's say I will create a user called test, and the password is test as well. Again, this is not something you would do on a real network. Um, this is just to show you how things work, okay? I will give this user the write permission, the read permission, the and the list permission. Let's say I don't want them to delete or rename anything, okay? And then I'll click on add. That's it. You're done. You've set up uh, the FTP. Now let's see if it really works. Okay. So I will close this, close this for now. I'll go back to the PC here and I will go to the command prompt. Okay. The first thing I will do is I will connect to the server using FTP. So I have to write FTP first. That's the command and then the IP address of the server. So 192.168 dot one dot three that's the server ip address enter now it's connected okay now it's asking you for the username remember the the username the the user that we set up it's asking for those credentials so we'll uh, try to use cisco for now let's say so cisco is the username password was cisco and now we're logged in okay now you can uh use the command dir, which is for directory, and it lists all the files that are on the server, okay? If you want to leave this, if you want to end the FTP session, what you can do is just write quit, okay? And it would go back to your normal session. Now, um, what can we do? Let's say I will try to create a file on this PC, okay? And I will transfer it to, uh, to the server and then I, I will try to retrieve it on the laptop. So on this PC, I will try to create a file, upload it to the server, and I will try to uh, download it on this laptop. Let's see how we can do that. So I'll close command prompt for now. I will scroll down to the text editor and I will create a file here. So I'll write something. Hey there, testing FTP, oops, testing FTP. Okay, I will close this here. It will ask me if I want to save it. I will save it with a file, with the file name, let's say FTP test. Okay, now I will go back to command prompt. Okay, if I write directory or DIR just here, it shows me all the files that are here already. Notice the file that I created here. It's, it, it's here, FTP dot, FTP test dot text, okay, txt. So what I'm trying to do is I want to take this file and upload it to the server here. And then on this laptop, I'll try to download it, okay? So 
how can I do that? The first thing we need to do is we need to connect using FTP. So FTP. Now, if you remember, we also have the DNS uh, set up here, right? If I go back to DNS, I have www.maliha.com as uh, a domain and it, it, it is set up, it is working, right? So we can also connect using the domain name. So if I go back now, I can write FTP. The one way is writing the, the IP address. The other way is just writing the domain name. Okay, it's connected. It's now asking me for the username. I'll use Cisco again, Cisco again, and now I'm logged in. Okay, now how can I upload? If you want to upload a file, you need to use the word or the command put. Okay, put, and then uh, you would write the name of the file. So I named it FTP test.txt. Okay, enter. And now writing file to file transfer in progress, file transfer complete. And it says the file is now uploaded. How can I check if it was really uploaded? I can go, I can use the same command dir or uh, the directory command to see if the listing now has FTP test. And if you notice here, it has the FTP dot, uh, test dot txt file. Okay, now I'm done on this side. Let's go to the laptop. Okay, so if I go to the command prompt here and write directory, right now it doesn't have any file except for sample file dot txt. I will try to connect using FTP. Cisco, Cisco, okay. Now I want to download it. So when you want to download the file, if I show it to you again here, directory, there is a file FTP test.txt, the one that I uploaded. Now, if I want to download it, I need to write get and then the name of the file, FTP test.txt. And now it should be downloaded. If now I want to quit the FTP because I'm done using it. So I will quit and then I will list the directory again. And notice now I have FTP test.txt. That is that means your FTP server is really run, is, is running. Now generally you would have uh, routers in, in picture for this, but we since we did not reach that point, we're just learning how to set these services up. Uh, for for now, this will do, but in the future for your projects, for your exams, you will have routers uh, to basically work with. Okay, so now let's look at DHCP and how to configure DHCP. For this, I will create a new LAN local area network. Uh, I will not use the one that I was using before. So let's quickly add a server first. Um, and then we need, let's say, a, uh, a PC. Let's put two PCs, one laptop. Okay, and then let's also add a switch. Okay. And I will then connect all of them. So I will use this automatic connection. Server to switch, switch to laptop, switch to PC, and again, switch to PC, okay? I'll just forward it so everything becomes green. Now, on the server, we need to, so all of these devices, we didn't configure IP addresses for them before connecting them together. It, like previously, when we did the activities, what we did was we used to uh, configure the IP addresses and then we connected the uh, devices, right? But this time we didn't do that. So how are we going to assign those IP addresses? It is going to happen through the DHCP service that we're going to configure. So I would go to the server, go to services, uh, go to DHCP. Right now the service is off, so I will turn it on. Uh, the name of the pool is server pool. You can leave that as it is. 
And now the starting IP address is where should the uh, IP address uh, start from? So what would be the IP address of the first device that is uh, assigned an IP address, okay? So for that, I will write 192, let's say 168, uh, let's say one, two, okay? The subnet mask will be 255, 255, 255, zero, okay? And I will save that, okay? And I will go back to config and select fast ethernet. I will assign an IP address here because this server doesn't have an IP address, right? It is assigning IP address to other devices, but it's the device. this device itself doesn't have an IP address. So I will assign the first address here, 192.168.1.1. And the subnet mask will be the same, okay? Now everything is saved. The service is running. We saved this as well. Now I will close this and go to one of the PCs, okay? Click on desktop, IP configuration. Now it is static. Static means you're supposed to manually add the address, but right now we've configured a DHCP server, right? So I will click on DHCP and now see it's requesting the IP address and it got the IP address. It was successful. It, the first IP address that it got was uh, 1.2, the, the one that we mentioned as the start IP address. Okay, so that's done for PC4. Again, for PC5, it was successful. And for the laptop also should be successful. Yes, it is successful. If you want to try, you can even ping. So for example, you can write ping 192.168.1.2 and it should work, okay? So that's how you would uh, set up DHCP. I think that's it. We've covered all the services that we sp spoke about in chapter three. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you for watching.